Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, I'm sure everybody enjoys bacon. We do here at the household, and at least two times a week, we cook bacon here in the backyard, and I use a flat grill to do it, and I've been doing that with good success for a long time. However, everybody knows that when you cook bacon, bacon has a tendency to shrink up and crinkle up a little bit. And I thought it would be nice to be able to have like a bacon press. Well, I looked up online and these things are available everywhere. You can get them online, you can get them at your local store, and that would be the easy way out. Well, I thought it would be a great idea and a great build here in the shop if we make a bacon press. So let's get started on today's video. Yeah, so this is a, a pretty interesting project. I had one of my viewers kind of challenge me a little bit and uh, said, hey, it would be nice to see if you could uh, do a project that uh, involves the plasma cutter, uh, the mill, the lathe, and some welding all in one. Well, I almost got there. Uh, we're not going to have the uh, lathe in this project. But uh, anyways, we got the plasma cutter going right here. And you can see that uh, I just uh, created a, a pattern out of Inkscape, transferred over to the computer, and, uh, and here we are. Uh, cutting it out on the plasma table Now the dimensions of this thing are, are roughly about 8 inches wide by about 11 inches long and It's uh, you know, that's just a that's just the size I come up with it can be any size But that seems to be the right uh, size for what I'm using it for All right with it all cut out you might be able to see there was a little bit of an issue right there The plasma cutter for some reason uh, had a hiccup and did not cut that through all the way but uh, I'm not going to worry about it I'm just going to mark it right here and uh, cut it with a cutoff wheel and you'll see here in a little bit we're going to get it over the mill and we're going to be doing something anyway that does uh, if it doesn't work out right that the mill will uh, clean it up but I had no issues with this this uh, actually uh, came out pretty good all right with that all out of the way um, I decided to clean it up uh, so I clamped it right down and I've got a flap disc a brand new uh, uh, ceramic flap disc. This is a 60 grit from Mercer and I just cleaning off only the mill scale or any of the uh, uh, dross that would be left over from the plasma cutter and uh, starting with some clean metal here. You know the plasma cutter did a pretty good job of, uh, of cutting that out. The only mistake that, that, that I made is you can see you can see the cut in uh, uh, marks right there in the grate itself. Uh, probably could have uh, arranged it a little bit differently and had those burn ends a little bit more on the inside but you know it's not too worried I'm not too worried about that uh, this is uh, it'll be okay for what I'm using it for all right so here's the first look of the Bolton tools ZX 45 AD drilling milling machine now this is a benchtop uh, drilling milling machine now this is uh, something that I decided uh, that was gonna work best for me rather than an upright uh, I just don't have the room for an upright and I happen to have a little bit of space right here on my old welding table in the middle of the shop and I thought this would be the best fit for me what I was looking for was a uh, bench top that uh, had a power feed on all three axes uh, a or X Y and Z and that's this is the only one I could find that uh, that had that there was a lot of them on power feed just on one axis uh, but this one's got them on all three, including a DRO that came with it. I'll learn how to do that here. I'll be working with that here in the near future. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with this for what I do. I'm, I don't, I'm not a professional machinist. I don't do a lot of that. But uh, for general shop work, uh, I think this will work just fine for me. Once I get used to a little bit more on how to operate it. You know, I'm very fortunate. Uh, my father-in-law was a, was a machinist. And uh, he handed me down a bunch of tooling and uh, you know this particular bit right here was something he had made oh my gosh 20 20 years ago plus he explained to me and he made it for one particular job and it's like an end mill that uh that you know is tapered on about a 30 degree angle and it's perfect for what i'm using it for right here I'm putting a, just a bevel on both sides of this grate and uh it is just uh it's working out just the way i was hoping all right, with all that done, I'll check it out of the fixture here, and uh, there it is. Get it all cleaned up, and it's time to move on to the handle. Now, this is just a, uh, it's a piece of eighth-inch 
flat bar stock and I'm just kind of creating a, a handle if you will. Now originally I was going to cut something on the on the lathe and have some round bar stock and you know cut something uh, fancy so I can incorporate the lathe in this but then I changed my mind decided that it might be best if I put some wood on this handle. I was just trying to diffuse some of the heat that we might possibly be getting you know from the flat top grill. But uh, anyways that's why I decided to do this so this is what I'm coming up with here. Uh, just a little bracket with a handle on it and I'm just cutting it out here on the uh, porta band. I can't quite get inside the middle of the throat right here. I'm just cutting as much as I can and I'll clean up the rest with a file in the vise. I got as much of it cut out as possible over the Burr King and uh, just kind of cleaning up uh, everything I can. Uh, sharpening up some of the edges, uh, making the lines nice and straight. And then it's over to uh, the vise and a lot of file in action. Uh, it probably took me 20 minutes to, to get this all cleaned out. But hey, patience, and I don't mind working a little bit. And you can see the progress there. A lot of filing, but I got it. All right, so when it came to the wood choice right here, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I've got a lot of different hardwoods up there, and I hang on to everything. And uh, in going through here, you might see some uh, purple heart, some paddock. I got some walnut in there, some ash. And then this piece of uh, zebra wood is something that uh, I had left over from a project and it just happened to be uh, the right size and shape. And uh, there you go. I'm going to put that on there. I'm just going to mark it out. I'm marking it a little fat, about an eighth of an inch fat. And then over the bandsaw, just kind of trim it up and get it uh, to more of a, a workable dimension here. Uh, this is about three quarter of an inch wide, so I'm going to narrow it down. I'm going to slice this in half, and I'll have both uh, both halves uh, for the wood handle. You know, a lot of people do this differently. I've I've seen quite a few vi videos on on handles and knife making and stuff like that. And there's lots of different ways of going 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 about it. But, uh, this is the way that uh, I've done it in the past. It seemed to work out pretty good for me. Uh, just drill a hole through both pieces, and then uh, line up right there. And I just punch it through and then uh, drill this out right here and you know for the most part it, they line up pretty good usually I haven't had anything off too far you know you trim it up at once you get it all put together you got a little bit of room to trim up all right and then this is uh, just some quarter inch aluminum dowels and that's what I'm going to use and it's time to epoxy everything together cut open the epoxy and oops hopefully your epoxy is not dried up like mine <laughs> a quick run down to the hardware store picked up another tube this is a one-shot tube, by the way. That right there is all you get in the tube. And uh, that's just enough to do what I'm doing right here. And that's uh, getting a little bit of epoxy on both the metal and the wood. And then I also wrap it around the dowels as well. Get plenty of it on there, push everything through, and then clamp it all together. Now this, uh, you know, this is, they say it's like five minute epoxy or 10 minute epoxy, something like that. Uh, I, I got everything clamped in where I needed it to be and I left it alone for about an hour. And when I came back, it was, uh, it was good and hard and ready to, ready to start to work. So it's back over to the Burr King now and uh, grinding down the aluminum dowels and starting to work on the profile of the handle a little bit. Now I've got some, uh, <clears throat> some 80 grit right here to start with and and it makes some pretty quick work of this and you got to be a little bit careful with it so I just uh, use this to clean up the top and the bottom part of the handle to make everything nice and flush and then when I was done there on the end as well once I got it roughed out I went and switched over to uh, some 150 grit uh, it gives me a little bit more control on uh, you know working with the profile of the contour of the handle itself you know I, I can just work it a little bit and it kind of I can control the roundness uh, much better than the thicker grit so I'm going to start by doing the best I can here on the Burke King getting uh, getting this thing shaped up the best I can then I'll take it over the take it over the vise clamp it in and do, do a little bit of finish work with some uh, with some sandpaper right here uh, I jumped right back with some 80 grit again here to, to kind of blend in the roundness on, on both sides and, and the edges. And once I was happy with that, uh, I switched over to some 150. 
and uh, I cleaned everything up and made everything nice and smooth and kind of finished everything up. You know, I, I didn't plan on doing this. Uh, I just had a spot there I was taking off, but it came off so good uh, with this die grinder that I decided, uh, this is the mill scale, by the way, and I just decided to clean off and take off all the mill scale and get down to clean metal. thought it was a better look to kind of match the, the plate itself. And then just a non-woven pad to clean everything up. And then it is time to weld this on. A couple of mag squares, centered it up. Fired up the HTP Invertig 313 AC DC and started in. Now you can see that I had it on a pulse mode there at first. That wasn't working out. So I just decided to go straight TIG, straight DC I should say. And I'm using some 309L. This is what I like to use uh, when I'm uh, welding mild steel a lot. It's just really clean for me. And uh, I'm gonna try to do the best I can and lay a really nice bead on both sides of this. It is gonna be like a conversational piece out by the barbecue. And I don't know, people might be looking at it. So I'm trying to do the best I can to, to make it look as good as I can. And <laughs> I don't do it all, I don't do this every day, but uh, uh, you know, to me, I'm okay with that right there. You know, I love welding. I love welding with all the different processes. And, uh, you know, uh, when you when you do them all, you know, you can't get perfect at all of them all the time because you don't do them all the time. But uh, it, is, it sure is fun. All right. So boiled linseed oil. I thought that's what I was going to use, but that was all dried up. So I got some teak oil or some tongue oil, either one. Uh, put a couple of coats of that on there. And uh, there it is. You know, this is a great little project for me. We knocked this thing out in about four hours probably, and uh, it was good for a Sunday afternoon, but hey, you gotta try it out. And I gotta say, I was happy with the results here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Hey, don't forget to check out my website. I got my new table dogs up there, along with my torch lead holders. Hope you guys, enjoy again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Jimbo's Garage.